I am Christopher. I'm from uh, New Orleans. I'm 23 years old, and I'm based out of Dallas, Fort Worth. What do you do for a living in Dallas? Uh, I'm actually in direct marketing. Direct marketing? Okay. How much do you bring in a year doing direct marketing? Uh, not, not really a lot. Um, this is, I haven't really been doing it for a while. I've kind of just started with direct marketing, um, kind of in January. Also, make sure that you're subscribed. This is one of the first 50,000 subscribers here will win $1,000. So probably maybe around $35,000 a year. Mm, $35,000 a year. Now that's interesting because that does not link up with the checking account that we have, but we will talk about that. So did you go to college? Uh, yes, um, I, I go. I went to college for a little bit. Um, I kind of, I kind of had gotten out of it because I don't have enough money to pay for it. Mm. Um, a lot of my money goes from medical bills, or I transfer it, and you know I'm staying with family, so it's like when I come home, I'll transfer money to them for the bills. Um, okay, and I think we we can just kind of mention this out of the gate. I think a part of medical bills and potential future medical stuff is going to be a large part of the conversation, which is what, which is the reason you're wearing the uh, N- N95 mask today yeah. because you have a surgery coming up and stuff like that. So uh, we'll definitely get into that. Now, has that been limiting to your career? Yes. Um, so um, what's going on is I have um, like the, the, the muscles inside my esophagus, the nerves got damaged. How? The doctors don't know. They don't know yet. Uh, they had scoped me recently, and I'm seeing a specialist for it. And she's gonna be um, she's gonna be putting a tube through my nose and pushing it down my throat to see uh, the pressure, the pressure of it all. You know how it swallows and everything else. Mm. I do have to selfishly ask: if they don't know what's caused it, how do you know you're not contagious? Because it's one of those. It's one, okay. So my mom has a condition called Sjogren's, which is kind of like a genetic thing. Mm-hmm. So that's genetic. That's not a contagious thing. That's, well, is that the same thing? Yeah, they're. I thought you said they didn't know what caused it. They they don't know what caused it, but they suspect that it might be because a lot of the symptoms that I'm having with it goes with Sjogren's disease. Okay, does it hurt? Yeah, and it's also scary because I could have frequent episodes of choking on my food. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, that's ter- That's like, oh, that's a phobia of mine. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That really sucks. It, it it does, and that's kind of the reason why my account kind of my account always looks dry because I'm always sending money elsewhere. What's your healthcare situation? Health my, insurance. Sorry. My health insurance. Um, I'm on my mom's medical pro- uh, medical plan. And how is her medical plan? It's trash. Oh dang! Where does she get it through? She gets it through a job. She through works job, at a bank. And she just. The coverage just is not very good. Uh, it's it's not that the coverage isn't very good. It's that oh, you know, let's say they need a statement to know where you know their money is going when they cover like surgeries or you know medications. It's like they always fumble. They always fumble the information. So it's like we'll be on the phone for almost an hour just to just to give uh, our part of it. Yeah. Dang. So. How would you describe your financial situation? Financially, um, as somebody who's young, I describe it as a learning experience. Um, I, I'm looking at it as an, it, I'm not anywhere near where I want to be, but this is the time right now to get myself situated and to anchor myself. Where do you think you are? Where do you think um well, You are financially. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of on a, I guess I'm kind of on like a, Financially, I'm not very good, but because my family's allowed me to kind of stay with them and kind of get myself on my feet, you know, so it's not okay. very good. So you live at home? Yeah. Yeah, because the checking account is definitely confusing. $35,000 a year now, that's okay. I mean, that that is income. That's $5,000 above what 28 point something percent of Americans make, or 48%, uh, whatever. Either way, this checking account that you gave us the last 30 days... No money came in other than three Zells of twenty five dollars, eighty dollars, and fifteen dollars. So where's this thirty five thousand? So as soon as so it's like as soon as I get paid, it's like I give my money towards like my bills because I get behind. I get behind on my medical stuff. I get behind on stuff for school. Yeah, but where is it even coming in? Um, it's coming in from like okay, so I get paper checks. Okay. They get paper checks for direct marketing. Because, you know, I, I opted out for the direct deposit because, you know, 
like a while ago, I had somebody hack into my account. Really? Okay. So a lot of it, you know, a lot of it's paper checks. And then you deposit into here? Yeah, and I, I deposit it in there, and what I don't, and what I'm not currently using, I cash it out and... Oh, and just cash? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's hard to track. It is hard level. to track. Yeah. Again, like I said, you know, again, like I said before, right now, financially, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Now, on the... Now on the uh, checking account, you didn't put you didn't cash any check in the thir- in these thirty days. Uh, I had to take a little. Well, I took a little bit of off time. I took mm. a little bit of off time. I'm not working full time right now. Mm, how many hours a week are you working? <sighs> they only got me doing maybe three, maybe three or four days. Um, three or four days, and then eight hours a day. Yeah. So it's like so the way it works is I go in we do the uh, we do the marketing uh, we do the marketing meeting we look at people's numbers we look at um, what we're selling and then they put us at different stores throughout the the DFW area and then we have to go and sell. Okay, what are you selling? Uh, it could be different products. Uh, right now we're doing AT and T. Um, it's like they have like a deal to where um, you can get several lines for this amount, for X amount, or you can get a, a deal on a, like, like a newer phone. You know, yeah. we've done ready refresh, uh, you know, but like the waters for like the jobs, like the, the big little canteen things like it could, it's different products. Is there $35,000 a year hourly salary or commission? Commission. Mm, and that's what you're projecting mm-hmm. then? Okay. Understood. Now... There were some zells in. Why were there zells in? Because um, I've gotten I've gotten short just a little. I've gotten short a few times, and um, thankfully, um, my mom says like, you know, my mom will like, you know, hear about him like, hey, you know, I'm getting short, so I'm gonna try to see if I can get more hours. So she just sends it to me, and I told her, I, I asked her, I'm like, hey, you know, you don't have to do that, but she's like, you know, you're at a hard mm-hmm. time right now. I mean, you had something that you were doing before, but. You you aren't able to do that anymore because it got the place I was working. I got disbanded in Stephenville. Is she a single mom? She's a single mom. We just lost my father. What is she? Oh, yeah. wow. I'm sorry. What a, man? Lots of lots of uh, trauma. Sounds like yeah. What does she do for a living? She's a bank. She's a teller. Oh wow! And she's selling you money. That's hard because tellers don't make like a ton of money. Well, she she's a lead teller. She's been doing. She's okay. been in banking for over twenty years. Okay. Now, what's interesting, and I'm just gonna have to probe because for just yeah, for yeah, everyone yeah. out there, this is it. These are all the finances that were sent. So, you know, let's look at required monthly bills. You live at home, so that's good. Do you have to get groceries, or is it just living off the family groceries? Uh, I try to chip in what we get. Um, so like, you know, stuff like we double up on waters cause we don't, we don't drink from the faucet. Like faucet water is like nasty. Um, I'll get like what faucet. Brita? Huh? Brita. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I proposed it, but it's like nobody keeps up with cleaning. I'm the only person that cleans the, the You guys filters. are definitely doing the more expensive method, but continue. Right. <laughs> um, Sometimes I'll get like maybe like snacks for the house for, you know, maybe like my mom has is on a diet. So she'll get snacks and bring it to work. Mm-hmm. So anything that I can pitch in, like maybe like the electricity bills, I'll hand her the cash for it. And she goes and she pays it. Now you drove here from Dallas. What's your car situation? Uh, we share a car. Really? So it's your mom's car and you use it? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have any car debt. Not right now. I'm trying to think of your monthly obligations because you're essentially not really working. Sometimes you are, but this month again, no check was deposited. Oh, um, Baylor. Just, what's up? Hospital bills. That's a big. That's a big contributor. Are they on a monthly payment? Plan? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yikes. Okay. Because I've had, because I've had, I'm having, I'm having a procedure done. I just got scoped. I had to see a specialist. Then I had to report to a neurologist that I see. So I'm having a lot of different things going on. So a lot of my money goes towards either some of the bills that I may have or my specialist visits. Jeez. Okay. When will they know what's up? Uh, I actually go and see the doctor on a Monday. So Monday morning, I'm going to go in for a consultation and um, they're going to they're gonna examine me further. What are all these medical bills if, again, you're going in for a consultation? 
this far in. They charge you just to see him. I know, but what what has been racking up if this on Monday is just a consultation? Well, okay, so this is this is a different type of specialist. This is like the throat. This is kind of like a throat disease specialist. I was seeing a gastroenterologist before. Oh, they deal with the stomach. They deal with. So uh, something wrong with the stomach too. That that's what they that's what they're thinking. They don't know, so they sent me to another specialist. So I'm spending more money. Because my gastroenterologist doesn't know how to deal with it. So he sent me downtown in Dallas. Okay. And I still, not to mention, deal with my neurologist. And I have a monthly injection for migraines and seizures. Oh, my gosh. You're just bullied. Nature's bullied you. Nature has bullied me. but um, Does that injection help? It does help. Okay. Uh, it helps a lot. Um, Good. But like I said, the one way I look at it, like I'd rather be financially, I don't want to be in financial hell right now, but I'd rather get it over with now so that by the time I'm a lot older, I can, I can get myself stable. Do you have credit karma? No, I don't have credit karma. All right. Let's get you to download it. Let's see. All right. Not the most pleasant credit score. 622. Payment history. Good. You've never missed a payment. Fantastic. Derogatory marks. Uh oh. What's this? Trans World Systems. $135 in collections. What is that for? Trans, Trans World systems. systems. Yeah. I don't recognize that one. $135. You can go ahead and click on it for more information. And it's dated, right? It says 2019. That's weird because the only time I use the, um, I guess, anything, I guess, Trans World Systems. Well, that could have been the collection company that it was sold to. Can I see? Yeah. Yeah, they could. Because uh, I know, because I know, I think, I think in 2020, I had changed. Um, it was something urgent care. You went to an urgent care, and it looks like you owed the bill, and then they sold it to collections. Oh, I know what that was about. I know what that was about. What was it? Uh, <laughs> so I was, at, I was actually at a party, and I, I was actually at a party around that time. Just hanging out with my friends, and someone mm-hmm. thought it would be funny, someone that they knew, to put in other side of food, and a and I ate it, mm-hmm. and it made me really sick. Oh, so I wind up having to go get taken care of at an urgent care. That's probably in Stephenville. Yikes! Well, if you paid this whole hundred thirty five dollars off, which shouldn't be terribly difficult, it would increase your credit score by uh, thirty five points. I honestly didn't even. I honestly didn't even know about that. They one. haven't uh, tried to call you or anything. No. And then total accounts. Let's see here. Oh, here it is. Department of Education. We also have student loans of seven thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars. So you were borrowing money to go to school before you dropped out. Yeah. I can't see the interest rate on here. Do you know the interest rates on these? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but I know for a time I had asked for like, I guess like a, like a pause or a break, whatever. Cause at the time I wasn't able to make payments on it. Yeah. Okay. So it recently started back up. That was actually higher than 7,000. Yeah. You paid off 4%. So, okay. Now you have a monthly payment on some past medical bills. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's not on there, but tell me what this is. You may have just negotiated with the hospital. And I did. I did. What is, what is your monthly payment? Uh, so I try to, I try to see if I can fit in maybe like maybe a hundred bucks or a little over. It's not a strict amount. No. Um, so it's kind of like, so I'm, I'm with Baylor. I'm inside the Baylor medical system. Um, so I guess the way they work is, you know, what can you afford monthly? Yeah. You know, along with the insurance. So I don't expect a certain hard figure on a monthly basis. Once no. you said how much you can afford monthly, okay. Yeah, so I try to, so I try to like, I try to like look at the curve of you know what they would ideally want me to pay and see if I can match to that amount. And sometimes when I get better uh, commission, I try to pay a little bit more to catch up. Mm. How much total do you? Owe? I'm trying. To I can't. Hold on. You mind if I go ahead and because I have an app on here with all. Of my yeah, go stuff ahead. On go it. ahead. Let's see amount due. Okay, so you have a mount due of five thousand. Wait one second. Uh, five thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars seventy-seven cents. Yeah. And you're paying how much do you think a month? Uh, an average. Give me an average. Around this might not show up because it's just 
updated, so some of this might not be up to date just yet. Um, but I think around one thirty five a month. But I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna wind up upping it. Yeah, because it's even ask you and you today to set up a payment plan at four seventy two yeah. a month. Yikes. Right. So one thirty five a month. Yeah, it's dumb. It didn't even update. How long have you been paying on that? I've been paying on that probably since last year. Oh. And at one thirty five a month on average, that'll take three and a half years to pay off. Is there interest on it? Not that I can see, no. Good. Now, what are you going to be owing here soon? For the visit? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure because um, sometimes when I go in, um, sometimes like they might, the copay might be different because I've had different stuff done. And I might not have a copay at all. Like I said, my insurance is terrible. It's like I may not I may not know what I'm paying for the visit until I literally just get there. Have you guys met your deductible for the year? We met our deductible for the year. Yeah, I um, New Year's about to start. Anyway. Yeah, New Year's about to start. That's why we were trying to get me to fit in for the for the for the still for the rest of the year for this appointment because next year without the deductible it's gonna be terrible. Yeah. What's the surgery gonna run you? What they, is left? Do they, you even know how much is left, or are we just waiting to know how much is left? I'm waiting to know. Because we got to financially plan for that. Whenever she gets the... Is she on the best plan, her work offers? That is the best plan. That yeah. is the best plan. Okay. Well, poop. Because we was, had switched over from United Healthcare. Because at first, we they were United Healthcare, and I'm like, why did they leave off of United Healthcare? Okay. Well, yeah, whatever the best plan is, when uh, enrollment starts for her, mm -hmm. she should make sure she's on the very best plan. Yeah, because we're definitely looking into make some making some changes. Yeah. Well, and then it might even make sense to shop. Well, no, you're 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 dependent, so never mind. Ah, okay. Well, I'm looking into a newer career too. By the way. Yeah, we'll definitely want to get this income up. Something potentially... Ah, crap. How much of college did you do again? I did almost two years. All right. You think you could cobble together at a community college and associate's degree? Yeah. Um, I've been thinking... Of, I've been uh, taking that into consideration. Um, just right now, I'm looking into what... I'm looking into like what my major, what I want my major to still be. Um, I know there's a community college um, that's down the road for me, so I've been looking in for enrollment for that. So, I mean, associate's degree would be nice. I think what you could do is like a work remote customer service job, or, you, I mean, you're doing sales right now. There are remote sales jobs you could do as well. I recently, I recently, hold on, if I could show you, I recently got an invite for a flight attendant um for a flight attendant um, interview is, recently. Well, is that what you want to do? Yeah. I mean, okay. As someone who's at risk for many things with what you have, flight attendant, is that what you want to be doing? Yeah, because um, honestly, um, the classes wouldn't even start until earlier next year because of how they schedule Classes everything. that you have to pay for or do they pay for No, them? no, no. It's paid for. Good. It's paid for. Trust me. I wouldn't go to these things if I had to pay for them. Well, what's the average for a flight attendant? Like 40 um, a year it can it, it differs because um, every I, every six months you actually get a raise. Yeah, but it starts low. It starts low, right? I think I had a flight attendant on here a couple months ago, and I think that's what he was talking about. And he was based out of Detroit, and he was like, "Oh, well, I've gotten to you no." Know, he was he was actually quite low because he was still within his first couple of years. But then it grows over time, right? Uh, with Omni, I think they start around be uh, about twenty an hour. What do you want to do? So realistically, I want I want to be able to become a voice actor, right? But I have to have money and I have to have a steady job oh, or something. Um, a flight attendant gives me the opportunity of yes, I'll I'll have to be away, I'll have to go and travel, but I also have a couple of off days and stuff in a row. A voice actor, okay. Um, it's just right now um, I've been looking for different things to help me get started. So, Give us a debt collector villain voice acting. A debt collector villain. Yes. A super evil villain trying to take over the world by collecting all the debt. Okay, I'll try. 
You owe me a lot of money, boy. Once I get you and everyone else, you're all gonna be mine. And I promise you one thing. If you don't give me the money that you owe me, your entire family and their descendants are gonna be in hell. Hello and raspy, yeah. That's yeah. villainous. <laughs> and also and also, um I have you happened to seen uh Star Wars? Yeah. At all? Well, yeah. So one of my favorite characters is Qui Gong Jin. You can do Qui Gong? A little bit. I'm all working right. on that. Give us some Liam. Obi Wan, you have to be very mindful of your actions and your thoughts. Focus on the present. Do not focus on the future. If you do not if you focus on the present right now, you can understand what's ahead of you. Be very careful. Promise him you're gonna train the boy. Take care of little Lanny. <laughs> nice cool yeah. well yeah i mean that's certainly i would love for you to be able to get that off the ground we do have to pay for the bills especially the medical bills that's the scary part yeah even if thirty five thousand dollars a year since you have no other expenses i'm a little confused why you're not able to pay the five thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars part of that is because it's been it's kept accumulating with the stuff i've had to get done yeah. So it's like it grows. What has it grows. grown from or to or what has been the total paid versus the total owed? Well, it's growing from the fact of, well, this doctor's trying to figure out what's going on. So, oh, we need to have this procedure done. I need to look at you. I need to get this fixed. And, oh, um, sure. your insurance your insurance isn't giving us what they need. But it's, it's at $5,667. How much have you paid of that? Uh, of the whatever the total was? That it's grown to over time. Like, what has been paid? Uh, it's been mostly it's been mostly like the copays and the visits. It's the copays and the visits. The medication is still is, is kind of expensive. Hey, you've been paying for the medication as well, then. Yeah. How much do you think has been paid? Thousand dollars? Two thousand dollars? Around maybe close to two thousand. Two thousand. Okay, so let's say so. Then that brings the total to seven thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars. Why have you not been able to pay that with zero expenses in your life off of thirty five thousand dollars? Where's the money? Where's your money going? I haven't been. I honestly haven't been making a whole bunch. It's like so with that commission job. It's like I'll have really good days, and I may not have as good days. That's part of the reason why I'm looking for a new career. Well, was your projected thirty five thousand dollars a little too optimistic then? No, it's not too optimistic. It's that okay? So you know how you have like one month business is good, business is booming, business is flowing. There might be that one down part of the time, especially if you're trying to um, acclimate or move into like a new product that you might be selling, and then it might mess with you. Okay, even if we, with the down months, again, we've established that you have zero monthly obligations outside of the medical stuff. So even in the down months, if the total year is thirty five thousand dollars, why are you doing? A hundred thirty-five dollars a month. I am. It just. It's something is not adding up. Well, um, again, like I told you, I have all these other bills. Is that's not just what I'm paying. I well, told you. We asked what the total bills were, and you said overall, outside of this five thousand six hundred sixty-seven, was two thousand. Yeah, but there's also the student loans. There's also the student loans you have to take into account. Yeah, which have been on deferment for the last two and a half years. So you haven't been paying them. No, I have been paying them. You've been I've paying been, them? Only 4% has paid off. Yeah, only 4% has paid off. Think How much have you been paying on the student loans? <laughs> I've, been paying, I've been paying what I can. I've been paying what I can. I honestly, I've been paying what I can. I've been, I've been working. I've been trying to, you know, I've been trying to you know, do the very best that I could to possibly save. But it seems like one thing after another is, is messing with me. Why have you been paying the student loans when these medical bills exist and student loans have been on deferment for the last couple of years anyway? Because they're all federal that you have. Well, okay. So when I got the student loans, um, I, got them, um, I got them when I first started school because, I mean, I had a little bit, but the Pell Grant didn't cover everything. So I, had, so I took out the loans and I tried starting paying them and there was a period where I wasn't able to work. Yeah. So that kind of put me, so that kind of put me behind. Then I started working again and then COVID hit mm -hmm. and then I had lost work for a little bit. But they were on deferment and you didn't have to pay. No, I had to pay. That's not what the people at the Great Lakes office told me. I've like literally, I've been, I've been wrestling with these people. If I called them right now. What was, was what you had to pay like back owed? Yes. Okay. How much was back owed? It wasn't the total amount or it shouldn't have been. If, it, if, if that's what they were telling you, I don't know. It's interesting. I wish I had a little more insight into that. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can log in, log in somewhere so I can get the total numbers. Again, like I said, 
I haven't made the best decisions in where I get my loans from. It's kind of like for a period of time when everything was kind of happening, I kind of just got stuff so I can have stuff. I didn't take into account what the ramifications that might be. That was federal student loans though, right? You applied through like FAFSA and stuff? No, 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 no. Uh, the FAFSA, I mean, I applied for FAFSA, but these were actual loans that I had to borrow. From? Great Lakes. Well, Great Lakes is my stu- my uh, federal student loan provider. Yeah, and your monthly payment zero because it's deferred. So, again, I don't know. I think Great Lakes may have miscommunicated or screwed you over or did something. So Yeah, because that doesn't, that like you said, that doesn't, that doesn't add up. What were you paying or are? You said what you can. Mm-hmm. Did they not have, a, again, a strict monthly payment? No, like I said, and something they, something's weird. Yeah, like I said, like a like I communicated with you before, they haven't been very helpful. Are you still? Hmm? Okay, you a hundred percent will be required to pay some monthly bill, yeah. starting in the new year because student loan repayments officially begin on your total balance. Yeah. So regardless if there's some backlog, some weirdness, some whatever, there's about to be a change, and I'm nervous for you because. <laughs> What the picture is looking like is bad right now. Right now, we have the $7,629 student loans. Who knows what the interest rate is? Mm-hmm. I'm not overly concerned with that because I bet they're on the lower side, but not terrible. But then we have that medical stuff that you owe. It's on a payment plan. I don't know if there's interest accruing on it. Sounds like not, as it's especially not on your credit. And you're only paying $135 a month. It makes no sense because you have no other monthly obligations. You say sometimes you help get snacks, but other than that, you have nothing. $35,000 a year, where is that going? And then we look in the last 30-day statement, only we had a beginning balance of $17.50, only $120 was put in, you didn't deposit or check that entire month. $101 was taken out. Well, you owe these different debts, you're paying for a Spotify subscription. You're going to Whataburger, spending three bucks there, spending five thirty nine at McDonald's. You're spending five sixty one at Jack in the Box. Dollar Dollar Tree, two dollars at Dollar Tree, three seventy five at Family Dollar, and then seventeen eighty five at Gyro and Wings in Arlington. Yeah. And then you take two Uber trips, and then have a Paramount Plus subscription. Not that this is a crazy amount to spend. It's only one hundred and one dollars for someone that's not paying on their debt. Why are you spending money on fun and all this stuff? This sem- That's not... So, okay. So, Spotify is something that most people have, right? Yes. And you see all of these Uber trips and you see all of these dollar store trips. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of that is just for, like, lunch when I'm, like, at work and stuff. Yeah, pack but, a lunch. Right. But a lot of this stuff that you're seeing with the Uber trips mm-hmm. and, a, and, a, a, and a stuff for, like, the dollar stores, those are snacks. Correct? Those are snacks. So, it's like if, if somebody's like, hey... The Uber sh- trip is a snack? No, Uber trip is to get you to where you need to go. Okay. So I, I, I told you, I mentioned this to you before, earlier in the show or earlier in the episode, that we share a car. So that means I don't always have the car. Okay. So we can somewhat justify the Uber trips. I don't think you need to be buying snacks when you have debt. And a Spotify subscription, yes, everyone has it. But should everyone have it? No. Most people are in debt. You're in debt. doesn't make sense for you to be paying two subscriptions, one being Paramount and one being Spotify, when you're well, not even paying any minimum whatever on this debt. Like, you're talking about being in a financial situation that's bad. Yeah, but let's get you out. Make sacrifices of not doing this crap. Mm-hmm. And, I, and again, I'm, I'm taking... I'm looking at what I need to... I'm looking at what I need to get done. And it's not like I'm not going to try to take the steps. I mean... So my uncle, uh, my uncle is somebody who's from a retired Navy. So he's trying to. So when I get on my feet, he's actually invited me to get on his um, to get on a credit plan with Navy Federal. Oh, why? Because why? because Navy Federal, as far as credit, is one of the best places to be on. Wh- why? What do you mean? What do you mean? What, I- what? What are the rewards? Like, what are you talking about? Best credit? What's it? <laughs> so okay, give me a reason. So, so as far as like, okay, so let's say, you know, once I get paid and once I get stable, you know, I have money. So when I want to get like a, like a newer car or my own car, the credit, like I might get approved for more stuff. So you're going to be taking out debt to get a car? No, I'm not going to. So, okay. So but then approved for what then? Okay. So as far as like once I'm, once I'm stable and I'm able to make more, you know, monthly payments and I've gotten that down to a, I've gotten that down to a, a considerable 
a considerable amount mm -hmm. when I've gotten that down to something that's more manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to be taking out money, but it's going to be it's going to be more it's going to be a more stable situation as far as credit goes because you have to have you have to have some form of you have to have better credit. To yeah, your your credit's in the mid six hundreds. Yeah. So. But if you pay off the collections, it'll raise it by thirty five, which I would do because it's only one hundred thirty five dollars. Yeah. Like I said, this is this is something that's going to be that's going to be in the future. This is. But I'm nervous if you get into credit card because you're not in a good financial position, and typically, that's the people you don't want to have credit cards. Not Navy Federal. What do you What do you mean? You're gonna have to say that other than just saying the name. What What do you mean? Navy Federal Credit Union. Okay, so what? here, so here's how I'm looking at it. Okay. What about it? What, what about Navy Federal Credit Union? That's it. Can you let me talk? Yes. <laughs> so here's how I'm looking at it, all right? All right. Of course, I'm not going to be getting all of this stuff right here and right now. This is going to be stuff that's in the near future. This is why I came here, so we can plan so we can plan out stuff, so we can help me help get this down, so I can have a career. Yes. I can manage things better. This, this is more or less kind of just a reminder of what I need to get done so I can meet my goals. But what about Navy Federal Credit Union prevents you from abusing a credit card? It's, well, I'm not going to be abusing a credit card. Have you ever had a credit card? I've had one. I've had one before, but I didn't at the time because I was really young. I'm still kind of young. I didn't trust myself with it, okay. so I got off of it. But you trust yourself now? No. I mean, I trust myself now, but again, this, this stuff is for when I get in a better situation. I don't want to put myself in any more trouble than I'm already in. So you're not doing it now? No, I'm when, not doing it now. When do you think? You know, I think mm -hmm. it's whenever it's it's whenever I it's whenever I get myself to where I need to be. There's not a set there's not a set table for fixing things. Okay, a house you know a house you know before it gets better is going to get. We should get a get set up. table because we need to uh, you know have at least timelines for goals in order to take actionable steps to hit those goals. So we definitely want to. When do you want to be in a better place? You know, by when in an optimistic way. I want to say in about six months. Six months. Okay. So clearly we need to do something about the money coming in. Mm -hmm. Again, the math is still not adding up to me, but there's, I, I can only say that so many times. Either we need to get you a new job or that $35,000 a year actually needs to be $35,000 a year starting now. And then you don't spend a single cent on snacks. You don't spend a single cent on McDonald's or Jack on the Box or Gyros. You really don't take an Uber trip unless it's a 100% required trip to go to like a doctor's appointment or something. No, that's the, the, the Uber trips that I take are 100% mm -hmm. required or okay. I wouldn't need to take them. Okay, okay. The snacks, the, the snacks. so the McDonald's, I can understand. I shouldn't mm -hmm. be having it anyway because I'm on a diet. But the snacks, as far as, uh, as, far as stuff for lunch, I need to eat those. Because as I, cause as I mentioned to you, you before. You can't pack a lunch. Where, where, do you, where do you think I'm going to get the, the stuff for lunch for? Okay, well, well, that's the question I was asking earlier. Like, are you getting groceries from, like, the household family groceries, or do you have to shop on your own? You said you sometimes contribute, but you didn't say you had to. Yeah, so I'm do you sorry, have that's, to? That's my fault. I have to. Okay, so this is required by mom. Yeah, this is required. Okay, this is required. and that is different. And that is different because we definitely want to make sure we're packing for lunch instead of eating out. Now, Spotify and Paramount, cancel them you don't need them now well i was planning on canceling paramount anyway okay and spotify we we don't have fun money right now fun money while we're suffering doesn't doesn't equate so then we need to make sure this thirty five thousand dollars a year truly becomes the on average two thousand nine hundred sixteen dollars a month before taxes with two th with that turning into like two thousand two hundred or something after taxes imagine what you can do with no monthly obligations you only spent 101 dollars you know, even with fun, you only spent $101. So all of a sudden you have like 2000 what? Two, let's just say $2,000 left after everything. You could, because you're living at home and everything, you could easily put $1,700 of that towards this medical debt. And the medical debt is gone in just a few months. And then your student loan payment um it sounds like you might be on an income-based repayment plan. I'm not 100% sure. But even if not, I doubt it's more than like a couple hundred bucks okay. a month. So, okay. So, as I've mentioned to you before, mm -hmm. when I, when I, you know, when I get, you know, the money and I take it out, yeah. I hand it to, like, a part of it, I hand it to some of my mom with the medical stuff because she's the primary. She, she, okay. So, she has a, 
the five thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars. Oh, that might be on her credit. I'm curious. Oh, that's really interesting. That is different. Um, so does she have additional obligations for your medical stuff other than the five thousand six hundred sixty-seven that's owed? Yeah. What? Um, do you know how much? Well, is it like payment back or like future payments? I think it might be future payments because okay. they might start her on treatments for lupus. So, oh my gosh. Um, gosh. and plus, and plus, my we have stuff with my grandmother, and my grandmother doesn't. She can't work. And she's and she's not smart enough to want to claim disability, even though she has a disability. Well, how old is she? I mean, she should be on. She's like, in her okay. okay so Medicare, here, Medicaid. So, so here's the problem, right? She's in her seventies. She's in her seventies, and I don't mean to talk about people, but she's a bit of a mean person, right? I'm not saying it has anything to do with that, but on top of her being uh, on top of her being a seventy a person in her seventies, she's not very financially um, sound. Sure. She's not very financially sound, and that's part of what screwed my mom over with credit cards and stuff in the beginning when she had me as a kid mm-hmm. because she was taking advice from her. <laughs> and my grandmother decided that when Katrina happened, when we moved up here, that she would go back down there and be in the same situation that she was and get in a bigger hole with her medical stuff. So when she came up here and she started having more health problems, it made things worse. Yeah. And your uh, she should be. She's on government health care, probably. Mm-hmm. She's on. Well, she's on Social Security. Yeah. But she. But she's allowed somebody and Medicare. Yeah. yeah. But but she's allowed somebody who doesn't help her with bills, who's asking her for help on a car on a car note, which again I have no idea why. <sighs> again, we've we've talked to her about that, and we can't have him kicked out because. That apartment is y'all still are under- too linked. Y'all are just so linked. It's it's like it's just it's it's a. It's a landmass that you're all connected. You are in the Pangea stage of your family. Like, instead of being y'all as individuals, and I understand the healthcare, especially since you're under that 26th limit after the law was passed a few years ago, but your mom's, like, congealed to your grandma, and you're congealed to your mom, and everything's just so tied, and it's it's so bad. It's it's a mess. Um, again, that's why, again, that's why I'm here, isn't I it? I know. So I'm trying to think. I think, oh man, well this, the, the grandma conversation, that's a conversation with your mom, and my immediate thought is, well, okay, if your mom is helping to support, then we need to see every, where every single penny is being spent by your grandma, and your- It's not going to places it needs to go, I can tell you that. Okay, and then your mom says, okay, if I'm going to support you, then your money needs to be set out in this kind of budget, and if she's not doing that, then your mom doesn't support, because she's essentially enabling bad behavior. So that's what I would tell your mom in a very- macro perspective but again that's not our conversation right. i've had that conversation with her before but that's I, again i'm not going to get into that that's a whole can of worms yes. myself for sure and then for you and then your mom's situation because yes it is so of the like two thousand dollars pre-tax post taxes uh besides your monthly obligations you're saying the vast majority of that two thousand dollars needs to go to your mom yeah it needs to go because it needs to just needs for your medical stuff, not even her medical stuff. Well, it, it might some of it. She might need some of it to go to medical stuff because again, we also have rent. We also, you know, we also have rent. Okay, well, you told me you were. Well, you didn't say you had to pay for that. No, so. what, I'm, what I'm saying is that that the, the the money that I give her goes to the medical bills, and it can go to whatever. Just your medical bills, though, right? Not hers. No, yeah, it's just mine. Okay, now what are these medical bills on a monthly basis other than this five thousand six hundred sixty seven dollars? I haven't I haven't looked all the way into it right now. Again, right now is right now is very complicated. I, I know that I've I know that I've had a few procedures that was really expensive that we're paying on. Okay, do you get where I'm struggling right now? I can't see what to do because I can't see where everything's going in where, why, how, when I there's there's no insight, and because of that, I can't put together anything. I can't, because I just don't know. You we, you should, based on all the information provided, have at least two thousand dollars after your monthly obligations and post taxes. Where does that go? I don't know. Where it sounds like the majority of it goes to your mom. Where does it go from them? Then to medical expenses. What are the medical expenses on a monthly basis? We don't know. It's impossible. This is impossible for me. I really can't. There's nothing without insight. And I, I it's it's the iron curtain. <laughs> so I don't know. Honestly, um, I, I think I think to me, I think for me to get a big help outside of this, 
it's going to be a much it's going to be a higher paying job. I think for me, I'm not saying that that's the I'm not saying that that's the all end all be all for all of this because it's not. But that's but that's going to be a big step for me, right? That's going to be a big yes. step for me. That's going to be organizing. And it might all come my with good healthcare too. Yeah, yeah. Insurance. Different healthcare, different insurance, different priorities, right? Or putting or putting in line priorities, and because I think part of my problem, or part of our problem, is that we try to do way too many things at once, or pay off way too many things at once, and that's where it probably kills us. Well, also, that's you, part just, of it. you don't know where your money's going right now. That's, you can't. You can't tell me. That's that's part of it. So a higher paying job, yes, that helps things that you know, pay, payments and paying off debts. It absolutely helps things. But if in general we don't know where the two thousand dollars is going, where it needs to go, how it's being spent, then a higher paying job is not going to solve that problem. That's the baseline we need to figure out. So you need to f- because if you had that two thousand dollars after your monthly obligations that we see here and the taxes. You could pay off this medical debt in three months. Yeah. Easy. Three months. But again, we don't know where it's going. Have a conversation. I, what my non-official advice would be is that you have a conversation with your mom and you're saying, okay, what are the medical debts that I am responsible, or what are the medical bills that I'm responsible for on a monthly basis? I give you that money. Everything else is going to pay off this other stuff that I already owe mom. Mm-hmm. Because you have to get your life started at one point, at some point as well. Well, well, again, that's again. So for a few years, I'm not saying that that's an excuse. For a few years, I, I had a rough time, but for right now, I'm just like I'm in my twenties. I do not want to be dealing with this crap while I'm in my thirties. No, 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 I, I don't, and I definitely don't want to be in my forties because my mom's brother. You know that that's a different story for a different day, and that's part of the reason why I'm trying to get it together now. Yeah, and, and I did, and I did make it, and I did make it, I did make a point to say, look, once. Once we once, you know, I get a new career and I get myself settled, we are going to have to have a serious talk of we need to have the serious talk now. Yeah, this is this is the baseline. If you don't know where the money's going. So is it urgent? It's urgent. It's very urgent. Yeah. We, yeah, that's that's everything, because we want to be able to utilize every single cent that you're bringing in the most effective way. Mm-hmm. And without knowing where it's going, we can't. So that's the baseline you need to get set. That conversation needs to happen immediately. And yes, we should work on increasing income. But $30, $35,000 a year without any required monthly obligations in terms of repayments or anything like that, you know, pretty great. That's not going to get me to where I want to be. No, 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 not at all. But, I, but what we're saying is that will work for now, but it doesn't work when we don't know where the money's going. So, but yes, we do want you to make more, absolutely. And I encourage that. Keep looking around for a job. Maybe apply for jobs. Like, that's a full-time job applying for jobs. So, that makes sense. I would cut back on the fund spending, though, again, it's really not that much. It just doesn't really make sense in your financial situation. I'm nervous about the credit card, but, you know, that's a distant conversation, it sounds like. And then, oh, there was something else that I'm forgetting. I mean, obviously, the unknowns of the future medical stuff, that sucks. And I'm really sorry that you're going through this. I'm really sorry that your mom's going through all this stuff. It's it it's a crappy situation. It happens, and we're all hoping for the best, praying for the best, that everything is just, everything works out in the end medically. And But one thing that I'm afraid of, this is my fear, mm-hmm. I remembered it now, you all being essentially a congealed life form right now, you, your mom, your grandma, everyone else, you wanting to not, be like this in your 30s. I'm afraid that since everything is so congealed right now, unless you don't have that conversation, unless you have that conversation, you are going to be that congealed life form into your 30s, and that's a bad thing. I'm not. I can, I can tell you right now, I'm not. I mean, I've, yeah. I've made I've made major changes to my life before, okay. down to like you know, down to like the cell count, <laughs> as they say. And honestly, this is just this is just another bump in the road, and this is just a teachable moment. Okay. I'm I'm a highly I'm a highly coachable individual. And I'm somebody is I'm somebody that if you if you show me something, if you show me, I'm like, hey, this is a piece of crap. You need to fix it. You best believe I'm going to put in the work and do it. I'm not just somebody who talks about, oh, I'm going to get it done. And then I should sit around doing not a damn thing. All right. For Chris, it is going to be pretty hard to give a good financial score here because I have zero insight. There is no money being put into the checking account. There is debt that is not being paid on and all the other stuff that I said all episode, even though apparently money's coming in, but money's not coming in and then all this stuff. At least there is no vehicle debt. There's no retirement started. There's no emergency fund. It's really hard. 
it's pretty much like financial life hasn't started, but at least we're not. Oh, and then there's student loans as well. Hammer financial score is 0 out of 10. There's nothing to give a point for. I can't give a point for not being in credit card debt. I'll take off a point if there was credit card debt, but there, there's nothing here. There's it's, it's really hard. I do wish him the best of the luck. Give him your love in the comments below, especially for the future medical procedures and everything like that. I really hope he does well, and then hope he does well financially going forward as well. Share this video with someone who you think might like it, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. See some things behind the scenes and interact with me on a daily basis. Subscribe and stick around for more. Thanks.